Good evening, good evening, good evening. God bless everyone. So glad you're online and we thank God that uh, you're here this evening and we give praise God. Uh, uh, let us go uh, to God in prayer. Eternal God, our Father in heaven tonight, God, we've come, Father, through the tolling of this day. And God, we want to thank you for the gift of this day. We're grateful, God, for the brand new mercies that met us early this morning, grace that has surprised us all day long on the journey with blessings here and there. Oh God, we thank you. And God, we know that you're not finished with us yet. God, we're thankful that we can come together tonight around your word, oh God. Lord, we thank you. And we realize that we didn't bring ourselves uh, to Bible study, but God, it's because of your goodness and your mercy. Oh God, it's good and pleasant for us to be together this evening. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for positioning us in your presence this evening. And now, God, as we come to your word to study and examine the scripture, God, we pray, Father, that what we learn tonight, we may apply it and we can walk in your way and that our lives will be transformed to be more like you, more like what the church would have us to be. God, we praise you. God, we ask you to speak, Lord, for we are listening this evening. This is your servant's prayer. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Thanks be to God. Amen. We bless the God. I can't wait until we get back in person because everybody can see me in person, but I can't see them in person uh, when we come to Bible study. Uh, some of you I can see. Uh, I want to remind you to get your hand out if you didn't for the scriptures. We may not use all of those scriptures tonight, uh, but we'll go as the Holy Spirit would lead us. I pray that uh, if you have something you want to comment or say, that you would have to unmute yourself and speak. And once you have uh, spoken, that you would uh, mute your mic again so that we would not have the background interferences. Uh, so we thank God. I pray that you had a chance to read uh, our Bible study tonight. Chapter three, we're, we're in chapter three now. We're still in the wealth and, and the riches uh, chapters. Next week, we'll go into walking in the light, uh, the last three, oh, not next week, week after next, we'll go because we will finish the uh, last half of this chapter uh, on next week. So tonight we're going to look at chapter three, verses one through 13. Verses one through 13, uh, I've given you that on your handout. Uh, I'm using the New King James translation uh, for this series. Uh, so, but you use any one that you have, but I do want you to keep your Bible open to Ephesians, the third chapter. Uh, because many of our passage verses are not on your uh, scripture vocabulary. So please. But we're going to find tonight that in chapter 3, verses 1 through 13, Paul reminds us, uh, uh, he reminds his readers of God's grace that has been uh, shown him regarding the revelation of the mystery the revelation of the mystery. Is my volume okay for you all? Okay, very good. Uh, looking at the very first verse, uh, we see Paul says, for this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for the sake of the Gentiles. That verse says volumes to us. Uh, I want us to uh, uh, focus on that. Paul saying he being a prisoner. But before I begin tonight, 
I feel like I need to, I don't want to say prophesy, but um, uh, the Holy Spirit is leading me. I, I need to encourage someone. Um, studying Paul and, and knowing where many of you are, I hope I get to finish the lesson, but I've got to obey the Lord. Uh, Paul was under house arrest in Rome for preaching the gospel. And the religious leaders in Jerusalem who felt threatened by the teachings of, 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 of Christ and did not believe that he was the Messiah, they pressurized uh, the Romans to arrest Paul. But maybe you're going through something not because of preaching the gospel. But when I look at Paul, even though he was under arrest, he maintained firm belief that God is in control in all that happens to him. My brothers and sisters, circumstances make us wonder if God has lost control. So many things. Uh, 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 but remember that God directs the affairs. He directs uh, uh, the affairs of the world. Uh, if that were the case, Paul could have given up. But thanks be to God, he didn't. Paul was a man on mission. And he understood God's grace, even in the midst of afflictions. And my mind goes back, uh, maybe from the meditation this morning with Elder Kitchens uh, from uh, Psalm 30, 34, talking about afflictions. And I get, I've been saying that God keep your children through circumstances because Paul uh, recognized God's grace even in the midst of afflictions. Even in prison, he sensed that he is where God wanted him to be. And so Paul knew how to handle himself in the good times and also in uh, bad times. Somebody is going through something and God just wants you to uh, uh, remain firm that your belief in God, that God is in control of whatever you're going through. And so uh, uh, he wanted to go to Rome. Paul wanted to go to Rome to preach the gospel, but he found himself in Rome as a prisoner. Oh, what a good thing. And so as people there, uh, uh, things are, uh, 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 that challenges us. There are things that challenge us the most. And in stressful moments, uh, Christ does not leave us. He is always with us. He does not leave us. He uses those stressful moments uh, uh, to challenge our reliance on him. He uses those stressful moments to get the best out of us. It's like making grape juice. It's, it's, it's like making uh, olive oil. You have to put the pressure on it in order to get that juice, in order to get that oil. And so uh, 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 those stressful moments to challenge our reliance on him. He gives us hope when life shows to be hopeless. And, and he gives us steadfastness when people around us flush, uh, uh, fluctuate. People will fluctuate. The situations will fluctuate. But we must learn uh, to tolerate people who don't love us. We must learn to tolerate people who don't agree with us, people with negative criticism. God wants you to be encouraged and he wants you to not lose heart because of your circumstances. Do know again, whatever stressful moment, whatever you may be going through, it is God working it out. It is God working for your good. God is 
is taking that bitter moment and he's going to sweeten it. But he wants us to continue to rely on him, trust in him. Praise be to God. Let me stop because I can go on and on. Uh, uh, but I want someone to be encouraged tonight. I want you to get this. Uh, Paul was in prison. We're not in prison, uh, uh, but he was in prison for a good thing. And sometimes we have to go through things in order to get that good thing. And many times, like Paul, what Paul went through, it was for our benefit. Whatever you may be going through, it might be to benefit someone else. Praise be to God. It might be to benefit someone else. It may be something that you're going through that you're going to have to relay, hallelujah, to somebody you come in contact with. Praise be to God. Well, anyway, our lesson tonight on your sheet says that uh, we're going to study tonight uh, uh, the mystery of the ages and truths about the church. We're going to learn some truths about the church tonight. So we're talking about mystery and church, mystery and church. Uh, and we see now Paul is going to let us in on the greatest mystery of all time period. It is a secret that for millenniums has been known only by God. It was hidden from the uh, patriarchs. It was hidden from the priests. It was hidden from the prophets. The mystery is uh, there was to be a new creation, a living temple that we talked about last week in which God would live to carry out his message of salvation to the world. So as Paul begins to write about the mystery of the ages, he says, for this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus. Oh my God, keep your Bible open. Uh, Paul did not consider himself uh, a prisoner of uh, uh, the Roman emperor or Nero or someone, for he knew his prison experience was a part of God's will for his life, for, for, for the sake of of, of, of you Gentiles, what he had to go through. It was for the sake of you Gentiles. You will see that in verse one, the last clause. Uh, had not, had Paul not been in prison, he might not have never written the prison epistles. And when we, like Paul, have problems, we must remember our suffering, as I said earlier, may, uh, 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 be for the benefit of someone else. It may be for the benefit of someone else. So with that brief introduction, here Paul explains the great mystery of ages and truths about the church, uh, beginning with the revelation of the mystery. When we look at the uh, revelation of the mystery, Paul, led by the Holy Spirit, Paul writes in verse 2, of our lesson. He says, surely, verse two, first he, he said, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was given to me for you, he's letting us know, surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace. It was given for us. And the key word in this uh, 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 verse tonight and in this lesson, I want you to know dispensation or some of your translations may say administration. And so the key word in the verse is for those who have administration, which means house manager, house manager. It is the management of the property and affairs of others and there to refers to stewardship. Now, a house manager, we know a house manager uh, uh, in the Old Testament, like Joseph uh, in the Old Testament. He, Joseph was a house manager. He was trusted with managing the household servants. He was trusted with managing uh, uh, Pharaoh's 
uh, 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 crops and, and the finances, everything. So when we think about house managing and trusting, how does Romans 15, 16 explain the word administration uh, given to Paul? He says that I might be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Paul was chosen, Paul was chosen uh, uh, to preach to the Gentiles as well as to Israel. Uh, look at what 1 Corinthians 4 verses one and two say, let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. Now, Paul's understanding of, of, of the mystery entrusted him uh, 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 did not come through the instructions of others, but Paul writes the revelation uh, known to him by mystery. So under the revelation of the mystery, uh, we're going to talk about a couple of things about the church under the revelation of the mystery. We're going to talk about the unknown of the church. What about the unknown of the church? We're talking about the word mystery and the word mystery you will find in our lesson tonight in verses three, four, and nine. The word mystery uh, occurs in verses three, four, and and nine. It does not mean that which is uh, obscure or unintelligible, but it means a divine secret which is known only to those to whom it is revealed. Now, when you look at verse three uh, in our lesson, verse three in our lesson, and it says, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery as I have briefly written. Now, when you look at that and you look at 1 Corinthians uh, 2, verses 7 through 12, if you have your handout, would someone read those verses for me? Verses 7 through 12, uh, under the unknown of the church, please. Can but I we speak? speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Mm -hmm. But as it is written, eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them who love them. But God has revealed them to us through the spirit for the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man, which is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Yes, yes. When you look at that and you note the word revelation in verse three, the word revelation means unveiling or the communication of knowledge of God to the soul. And after his conversion on the Damascus road, Paul immediately went to Arabia for three years. And during this time, uh, uh, it lets us know how Paul received the gospel according to Galatians 1.12. He tells us, for neither, for I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. So Paul wanted us to know when he spent those three years in Arabia, he didn't get this from man. He, he, he didn't get this from anyone 
uh, 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 teaching him, but it came by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Praise God. And see this special, the special revelation of the truth of the church. Remember, we're talking about truths of the church. The, the special revelation of the truth of the church was first made to Paul, but he would not have uh, understood the dispensational significance of the mystery of the church apart from the revelation given to him by God. It had to be given by God. And likewise, we cannot understand the significance of the mystery without the help and the illumination of the Holy Spirit. That's why when we study, we ask God, let the Holy Spirit to, to illuminate the word, to lift that word off of the pages and give us understanding. So we have to know mystery and why and how we are getting it from Paul. It came by revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, for further study of the unknown of the church, I want you to look at those verses. This is still talking about the unknown of the church. And if someone would begin, begin just reading those verses, beginning at Romans 11, uh, uh, 25, all the way to 1 Timothy 3, 16, I want you to hear the unknown, the mystery uh, 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 of the church, beginning at Romans eleven twenty five. Romans eleven twenty five. For yes. I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. First Corinthians 15, 51. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Ephesians 3, 3 to 4. How that by revelation, he made known to me the mystery as I have briefly written already, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Hmm. Ephesians 6, 19. And for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. First Timothy, first, first Timothy 3, 16. And without controversy, Great is the mystery of godliness. Yes. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. Praise um, God. Look at those words. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up in glory. Good God Almighty. Thanks be to God. Look at that. All of these are giving us unknown of the church. We bless God for these scriptures. Please go over them again. And I I guarantee you, if you ask the Holy Spirit, he will give you even deeper revelations and understandings of the unknown of the church. Some of these verses are uh, not complete verses. They are phrases of them. But do understand that part of the revelation of, uh, of the mystery is the unknown of the church. And continue to with the revelation of the mystery, let's look at the importance of the church, the importance. And someone may say, what do we mean when we speak of the church? What does God mean? We are not uh, thinking about a church that is a building. We're not talking about a building. We learned last week about the uh, church, amen, uh, uh, a building. We are thinking about the church that we look at in verse 10 in our Bible, uh, in our passage, but we'll get to that in a moment. And then in verse six, uh, we see 
uh, of the church. Uh, we are told what the church is and how it is uh, composed. So the mystery involved the Gentiles, that they should be fellow heirs of the same body. Remember now, I'm, I'm talking about the composition of the church, that they, the Gentiles, the Gentiles that should be uh, fellow heirs of the same body, that they should be partakers of God's promise through the gospel. Now, the key word to understand in verses uh, 10 and 6 of our lesson is the key word that we want to get with what the church means when we speak of it is the word body, body, body. The church then is the body of Christ. It is the body of Christ. And why is it the body of Christ? It is the, the church is a body of Christ with a purpose, with purpose. Look at purpose, Ephesians 4, 12, 15, and 16. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, but speaking the truth in love, may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body fitly uh, uh, joined. Uh, I'm so used to another translation and knowing fitly joined together, but joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective, the effective, the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Thanks be to God. And then Colossians 1.18, and he is the head of the body, the church. The church is the body who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. Amen. So if the church is the body of Christ and he is the head of the body, who are the members of the church and how do they become members uh, 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 of the church? I want you to think about that question. If the church is the body of Christ and Christ is the head of the body, who are the members of the church and how do we become members? Remember, we're doing the composition of the church. Now, uh, 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 the mystery is uh, to which Paul refers, he translates the word which refers to something uh, that would be uh, that God could use through Jesus Christ. So when we talk about uh, the members, I still want you to think about the question, who are the members of the church and how do they become members? Uh, because the mystery is that the Jew, uh, that Jew and Gentile believers would become equal in one body, one body, the church. Jew and Gentile would become equal in one body the body of Christ, the church. So when we think about that, uh, 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 the phrase, as I already written briefly in verse 3b, may refer to what he wrote in Galatians, and you have to read that late. I put it on your sheet. Read Galatians 1, verses 11 through 20, so that you will understand what he was referring to when he said, as I have already written briefly. What did he already written briefly is in verses 11 through 20. And a hint of it is that he was telling us about his former life. He was telling us about events of his early life. There you will find he will tell us how he went to Arabia and all. So uh, he's talking in verses 11 through 20 about his former life and the events of his life. So you should read those later. And then Paul continues uh, uh, in reading this 
uh, he said you will be able to understand the mystery of the church. So let's look at this, at uh, 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 the uh, uh, mystery, the members of the church, the members, the members. Now the mystery, thinking of the church, the composition of it, the body being uh, uh, the body of Christ, he is the head. And so who are the members and how do they become members? The mystery was not made known to men in other generations as it is now revealed by the spirit of God's apostles and prophets. But as we, uh, uh, although uh, the this mystery that we're talking about tonight, it was hinted at in Genesis 12 and three, in Genesis 12 and three, it was hinted at when God said to Abraham, all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. It was not uh, proclaimed or understood by anyone in the Old Testament, but the mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are uh, uh, heirs together with Israel, members, together of one body, you see in verse six, members together of one body and sharers uh, together in the promise in Christ Jesus. So we see here that the composition, even more and more, I'm telling you, but you're gonna talk back to me, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel of Jesus Christ. In other words, Gentiles have the same spiritual rights and spiritual status as the seed of Abraham, as the seed of Abraham. How uh, uh, does Paul tell us that? How does he explain how God makes this possible uh, when we look at the members of the church in Galatians 3.29 on the second, on the back side of your sheet. He says, and if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed. We're still talking about who are the members and how do you get to be members of the body of Christ? He says, and if you are Christ's, if you have been born again, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Are you with me on that? And he goes on to let us know this. Uh, 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 this is all the mystery that Jew and Gentile were to be united. Remember the wall, the, remember the uh, middle petition was uh, 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 rent, the veil, and they came together last week. So he's letting us know that the mystery and the truth of the church that we're talking about tonight is that the Jew and the Gentile were to be united in one body with an entirely new thing. Uh, uh, but how is the body, the church form? How is that formed? How is it, who are the members? It is formed through, and this is how it happens, it is formed through the gospel, the gospel in verse six. It tells you that the church is formed through the gospel, amen. That is by preaching of the gospel. That is what we are to preach, the gospel. The mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, Amen. They are members together with the Jews and also share together in the promise in Christ Jesus. The same thing, amen, of Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. When the gospel is preached, the Holy Spirit, uh, 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 and, and, and I ask you to part of how do you become a member? Well, when the gospel is preached, uh, the Holy Spirit convicts and converts. Amen. It convicts and it converts. This is how we become members of the body of Christ. It convicts and uh, 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 converts. Uh, souls are born again, Jews and Gentiles 
and are baptized into the body of Christ. Amen. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit, into one spirit. This is what the Holy Spirit is doing today. It's during that today. And only those who have been born again and washed in the precious, hallelujah, washed in the precious blood of Jesus Christ are true members of the church. You must be born again. You must be washed in the precious blood of Jesus, which is his body. Amen. And so the plan of the mystery was that Jews and Gentiles should be one in Christ. And this is what the plan of the gospel is all about, that we be one, Jews and Gentiles. There's neither slaves or, or, or nor free or, or Jews or Greeks. We are all one in the body of Christ. So the mystery of ages, the title of our lesson, is that in Christ, Gentiles are spiritually equal with Jews. We are spiritually equal with Jews. We're not any uh, leftover. We're not any neglect or any of that. We are equal, amen, spiritually uh, with the Jews. And in Christ, all differences, all the differences are eliminated because we are all one in him, a part of the same body with the same promises and the same spiritual status. Remember this, this spiritual unity is the mystery of the church. This spiritual unity is the mystery of the church that the Jews and the Gentiles are one. That unity is what is the mystery of the church. And because of his uh, 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 because of his concern for this unity between the Jews and the Gentiles, uh, we see what he tells us in John 17, 11. He, he, he prayed this, Jesus prayed this, amen. This was the last sentence in John 17, 11. Now I am no longer in the world. But remember when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he had gone through John 14, 16, and then in 17, he prayed for himself, he prayed for the disciples, and then he prayed for us. And he said in verse 11, now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, through your name, those whom you have given me, that they be one as we are. In other words, he was praying that he wanted us, the Jews and the Gentiles, to be one as he and the Father are one. Amen. We need unity. You do know that there is so many divisions uh, uh, in the church. The uh, 11 o'clock hour, the 10 o'clock hour are the most uh, divided times there is. Where is the unity? Uh, not just on Sunday morning, but you have so much divisions in what we call the church because people are looking at a building. We are the church. We are the members of the body of Christ and there should not be any schism among us. He, he died for this. And he said, in order for us to really be a true thoroughbred member of the body of Christ, we must be born again. And we learned last week that people will know that we are his disciples and we are born again uh, uh, when we have love for one another. So we have to be very careful. Are we passing the test? Do we pass the test? We, was, we, we, we must never forget 
We are one in Christ and are therefore responsible. We are responsible. Hear me. We are responsible because we are one in Christ. Oh, my God. We are responsible for helping and encouraging one another and always promoting unity among true believers. And you don't promote unity uh, by being a garbage can and allowing anyone to dump their trash in you. In you. you promote unity by uh, 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 encouraging and helping all of those uh, things that he speaks of. We're going to get to it in, in chapter four. Oh my God, all of the bitter speaking of one another is in the Bible, the clamor, the loud outbursts, uh, 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 the gossip, the bite, all of, we coming up ne uh, a week after next in chapter four, and he's telling us how we should walk. And so we must be sure that we're helping and encouraging one another and always promoting unity, amen. Uh, 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 who are those who revere, who, who are those who revere and live by God's written word? My God, my God. So we see here that God has given to us uh, under the revelation of the uh, mystery, we talk about the unknown of the church, the importance of the church, the members of the church. So you have to answer the question, are you a member of the church? Are you, uh, uh, have you met the requirements to be a member of the church? Remember now, you must be born again and washed in the precious blood of Jesus. Amen. And no residue anywhere. <laughs> so we want to make sure that we are members of the body of Christ. Who is the body? Oh my God. The, who is the body? The body of Christ are members who have been born again and washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. We are the members who make up uh, the body of Christ. So when now we look at the declaration, we've talked about the uh, revelation of the mystery. Let's look at a little bit now about the declaration. Before I go on there, are there any comments on the first section? Are there any comments, please? Questions or comments uh, from that about the members of the church, uh, the importance of the church, the unknown of the church, anything about this mystery? All right, now you got to be popcorn. I'm going to move on to uh, talking about the declaration of the mystery. Let's look at how the declaration, we know declaration means to declare, to announce, uh, to make known, to be a, 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 a voice piece for the Lord. So under the declaration of, 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 of the mystery, we're going to see how Paul was called to declare, to announce the mystery of the ages. And in verse seven, he writes in verse seven, I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. So here he's saying to us the word uh, in there when he say I became a minister or in some translations it said uh, when I became a servant I like that word servant of, of this gospel because the word servant, diakonos, uh, some of you who've been through class, the, the word servant, diakonos, is the word for which we get the English word deacon. We get the word deacon from uh, the word servant, uh, meaning diakonos, which means a servant rendering free uh, 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 word. And each of us has a responsibility. I, I'm telling you, this is not just for uh, 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 apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Uh, that's the five-fold ministry that we're going to get to next week. But, but we're talking today that each of
of us who have been born again, who have been washed in the precious blood, has a responsibility to serve and to make known the mystery of God in Christ, every one of us. It may be, uh, how can you do that? You may say, Pastor, how can I help? Uh, uh, what? How can I serve and uh, make known the mystery of God in Christ? It may be in uh, 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 helping in Sunday school or being an usher, uh, being a greeter, taking the offering or just inviting someone uh, to worship services. So this Sunday, everybody just invite somebody to worship service. But these are ways that we can uh, 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 serve and make known the mystery of God in Christ. When we get involved, when we get involved, we will discover our spiritual gifts. Yes, you will. And and, and you will discover your spiritual gifts and, and the place of service most rewarding and fruitful for us. You will find your place. You will get your niche. Amen. Uh, uh, there is no such thing as little or insignificant uh, servants or insignificant ministers, only faithful or unfaithful ones. Amen. So Paul was able only to um, uh, 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 declare, he was only able to declare the mystery of ages because of the working of uh, uh, his power, because of the working of his power. And the word working is where we get the English word. I, I, I had a lot of Greek words that I was going to share with you of these, but maybe we will uh, get a glossary of that. But when we talk about the working, the working in verse seven, the working of his power, uh, the word uh translated working is uh, the word we get from which we get the English word energy, energy, the word working uh, from the energy of his power. Amen. In other words, God energizes us to do his will. Amen. God energizes us to do his will. If God knows that you mean when you say I'm available to you, God will energize you to do his will. Whatever you do to, for the Lord, you do it with all your might because you're working, you're being energized by uh, uh, God. And, and when we look at the power, I, I'm still in verse seven, looking at that word, working uh, is translated as energy. And then the word power Translated, we all know dunamis, dunamis, that's a word uh, which we get the word dynamite, dynamite. So power represents dynamite. It means power. But here it refers to ability. So now you got the energy and you got the ability. When there is something God wants us to do, he gives us energy and the ability to do it. Amen. I can't do that. I don't know how to do that. God will give it to you. Amen. And therefore, we can never exalt or glorify ourselves. It's all about God and not about us. So uh, there you have the declaration uh, there. And now under that declaration, here we go, because you're going to see yourself even as members because you're members of the body of Christ, okay? Under the declaration, let's talk about the ministers and might of the church. The ministers and might of the church. Now, verse 7 tells us that Paul was a minister, uh, some translation, a servant of the church, and therefore of the gospel, uh, but the word here is not used in any official sense. All true members, hear me, all true members, you're a member of the body of Christ, all true members of the church 
are ministers of the church and are, hear me, oh my goodness, because some say, I haven't been through MIT. I have not been licensed. I have not been ordained, but you have been born again and you have been washed in the precious blood of Jesus. If you are a member of the church, you are a minister. Help, help me now. There's a difference in uh, uh, call me a representative ministry, okay? Everybody is called to ministry, but the representative ministry, we will come to week after next in Ephesians 4. But if you're born again, if you've been washed in the blood, if you're a member of the church, if you're a member of the body of Christ, you are ministers of the church and are responsible to share in proclaiming the gospel. Every one of us, not just the pastors, not just the elders, not just the deacons, not just the licensed ministers, not just the reverends, but members of the body of Christ. Everyone, if you're understanding what I'm saying, give me a hand or something right here, because I want you to know that you are, <laughs> give me a hand, <laughs> that you are, uh, and some say, I'm not a minister. Oh, yes, you are. Pastor didn't say it. The Bible said it. Give the thumbs up. I like these thumbs up. Thank you. Amen. You cannot escape this. You cannot get by from this. Amen. Amen. Let me see it. Can I get another thumbs up? Some more thumbs up. If you know, oh, my God, that all of us are ministers uh, in, and we are to be sharing and proclaiming the gospel. Notice how, now watch this. I want you to notice this. Notice how you became members or servants. See, I didn't do this. Notice how you became a minister or a servant. Paul writes in verse seven. That's still that verse seven. I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace. <laughs> Am I right about it? Can I get an amen? It's not by you going through MIT. It's not by you being licensed by a pastor. <laughs> it said that you became a servant of his word, of this gospel, <laughs> by the gift of God's grace. Amen. No questions. So if the question is asked, how are ministers made or how did I become a minister? I didn't do so and so. If anyone asks you, uh, how how did, if somebody walk up to you and say, minister so and so, I'm not, no, but how does the Bible say ministers are made? The answer is that God makes them. God makes ministers. Amen? Amen. Look at, <laughs> look at Ephesians. Ephesians 4, 11, and himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors, and some teachers. Amen. But that is the representative ministry for the body of Christ. But if you're born again, I say it again, and then washed in the precious blood of Jesus, you are a servant I mean to proclaim the gospel. You are a servant, whatever translation translation you want to use. If somebody call you a minister, I'm not a minister. Well, they say you're a servant. Either one, amen, you're not off the hook. You must be about proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. Can I get a witness? And then uh, uh, when you look at the ministers, how do they do it? You do it by the might of the church. It is the might of the church. This is indicated in verse seven. In, in verse seven, in the words, the gift of God's grace given me, and also in the words, by the effective working of his power. That's the might of the church. Amen. That's how ministers have their mind. That's the might of the church by the effective wonder work and power. Okay. So it's the effective working of his power. And there are those who think that because the witness of the church today is often weak and ineffective, and many Christians are half hearted, 
The church will decline until she fades away altogether. Mm. But the church will never fail. You may be half-hearted. Somebody else may be half-hearted. It may look like decline uh, uh, where uh, uh, church members, it may be they're leaving or whatever, uh, uh, of the decline until sh the church fades away altogether. But the church will never fail. Why? Because the Lord Jesus Christ is her founder. The Lord Jesus Christ is her foundation. The Lord Jesus Christ is her builder. And he has guaranteed that no power on earth or in hell will prevail against his church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So don't look and wait for the church to fade away. Don't look and think that it will fail because he says it's no power on earth or in hell that will prevail against his church because he's the founder, he is the foundation, and he is the builder. Look at what he says in Matthew 16. Someone read, please, for me. Matthew 16. 13 through 18, and I want you to use a preacher voice. I want you to go down in your belly and read these verses. When Jesus came unto the region of uh, Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So say they, so they say, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah and others, Jeremiah, are one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon boy Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father, who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter and on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Woo, hallelujah. My God. So therefore, don't look for the church to fail. Don't look for the church to fade away altogether. It will never fail. Look what he says in 1 Corinthians 13, 3, 11. For no other, didn't I say he's the builder? He's the foundation and he is the founder. Amen. And so Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 3, 11, for there, for no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. No one else could come and say that there it, this is it. Oh, I love this. This, this. this is it. Amen. He is the foundation and no one else can come and lay another foundation. So that is the ministers and the might of the church in making that declaration. And we need to know that. Amen. And now look at uh, 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 under the declaration of mystery, the assignment of the church. Just one verse, the assignment of the church. Instead of boasting of all he had done, Paul demonstrates the attitude of a true servant, of a true minister in verse eight by writing. In verse eight, he says, ah, to me, who am less than the least of all the saints? This grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles, the unsearchable riches of Christ. But I like that first portion. In other words, he's saying, although I am less than the least of all God's people, this grace was given, uh, 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 was given me. And so the word, when you look at the word less than the least, you see those words in verse eight, the words less than the least, it means, uh, I know this is not a word, you all, but what Paul is literally saying, he's saying, I'm the leastest. I'm the leastest. 
Okay. Can I can I go Ebonic on you? I'm the least as y'all. Spell least and add E-S-T on it. Uh, if there was such a word. It was not enough for Paul to call himself the least. He wanted to place himself even lower than that. He would always say, I'm the, uh, I'm not, I'm not a sinner, but I'm the chief of sinners. Amen. And so we see here the assignment coming to us. What is the assignment of the church in the world? What is the function of it? Oh my God. It is to preach among the Gentiles, the unsearchable or uh, 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 riches of Christ and to make all or see what the fellowship of the mystery is. Now, it is a twofold assignment, a twofold function. You'll find that in verses eight and 10, and I'm speeding a little bit along because I'm trying to see it's after eight. Uh, look at this. Uh, the purpose and ministry of the church in the world is that men may hear the gospel uh, and, and, and that to the angels in those verses, he says, and to the angels, oh my God, unseen uh, that they may have the manifold wisdom of God. Now note the church's message. This is our message, the unsearchable riches of Christ. That's our message and the manifold wisdom of God. That's our message, the unsearchable riches of Christ and the manifold wisdom of God. Not merely uh, ethics or morality, philosophy or politics, the, 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 the mission of the church, amen. The assignment of the church is not just to gather people together for religious purposes. It is not to compete with the world in worldly things, nor is it to convert the world. Amen. Uh, 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 the, the, the assignment of the church is to evangelize the world. Hear me. That's the key right there. The assignment of the church or the mission of the church is to evangelize the world. We know this. This is a part of our inception. Matthew 28, 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Oh my God. The word when he says go therefore. Oh my God. When, when we look at that, we are called to preach uh, to the Gentiles. And what are we to preach? The unsearchable riches of Christ. And the word preach means to announce good news. That's why, oh, I could add another one on there. You a minister, you a preacher, and you a servant. Amen. I ain't no preacher. Yes, you are. <laughs> you can't escape that because it's there. He said, when he tells us to preach to the Gentiles, preach means to announce good news, amen, and is the word from which we get our English word, evangelize, evangelize, and true biblical preaching always has uh, 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 evangelical uh, uh, in mind, evangelizing in mind. If we're not trying to evangelize, hear me now. Hear this last part. If we are not trying to evangelize, we are not declaring the mystery entrusted to us. God said that. I didn't. He said, if we are not trying to evangelize, we are not declaring the mystery entrusted to us. Paul was also called, and, and I'm going to end this because uh, uh, I want to get the last portion uh, he was also called in verse nine. He said, and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God who created all things through Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ. The word uh, 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 make plain, he's saying make it plain, make it so that they can understand it, amen. And that's where we get 
our uh, English word photo, photo. Uh, again, I'm not giving you all the Greek words. The, 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 the phrase make plain in that verse translates a, a, a Greek word from which we get our English word photo, photo. In other words, the Old Testament is the dark room. It's the dark room in which the pho uh, photograph is developed. Did you get that? Uh, and then it's brought out into the light in the New Testament so we can see the mystery of the church. The Old Testament uh, was the prophecy. The New Testament was a fulfillment of it. In this lesson, the Old Testament is the dark room and the New Testament is the light that develops uh, 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 the photo so that we can get a photograph. So after writing about this revelation and, and declaration of the church, we've talked about the ministers under there and the might and the assignment. Lastly, the motivation uh, for the men, uh, 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 mystery, for the mystery. I pray you will go back and read this because I know I was going extremely fast. Uh, but the motivation for the mystery, and we will be finished. The purpose for the mystery is in 10, verse 10, verse 10, uh, 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 to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church. And the word manifold means uh, many colored, the word manifold means many, many coming from manifold, many colored or much varied. Uh, it was used uh, to refer to multicolored cloth and suggests the variety of the wisdom of God. Uh, it's showing the variety of the wisdom of God revealed in the mystery of the church as one might see uh, in an intricately embroidered uh, pattern of a tapestry. You know, the old saints, the Old Testament saints uh, looked at the backside of God's tap tapestry, while the New Testament, uh, we can see the other side, which is a beautiful picture of the gospel that is the mystery of all ages. But in the Old Testament, they didn't get that beauty of it. They were looking at the backside of, of, of God's tapestry. And it wasn't until the mystery was revealed uh, in the New Testament that they saw the beauty of the gospel. So we see that God is showing us uh, beautiful things here. Let's look at the motivation. What brought about this motivation uh, 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 in Luke 15, 10, was that when we look at the uh, verse, last portion of verse 10 in your Bible, he said, the principalities and powers in the heavenly places, the principalities and powers in heavenly places refers to angels. It refers to angels who did not know what God uh, plan for the church ages. It was about the angels that did not know the plan God had for the church ages. And so that's where we ask ourselves, what uh, uh, did God show us in Luke 15, 10? He says to us, likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Pastor always used to, used to say that the heavens rejoice, the angels in heaven rejoice over one who uh, is converted or one who gives their life to the Lord. So it says the angels response when they see people accept Christ, uh, 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 accept the proclamation of God's mystery of redemption. But he needs us to be about proclaiming uh, uh, the mystery. He needs us to make a proclamation, amen, of, of the mystery. And so angels praise God for the mystery of salvation in church because uh, uh, of what God did or what Christ did. And he shows us in the Matthew 13, the son of man will send out his angels. Oh my God, look at this. Angels praise God 
for the mystery of salvation in the church because what Jesus did, he says to us, the son of man will send out his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness and will cast them in the furnace of fire, into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. We have escaped that because we've been born again. We've been washed in the precious blood. But this is what we share with others. Amen. All this, all this that I'm saying is according, he says in verse 11, according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is why Christ is the chief cornerstone of the church. We learned that last week in chapter 2, verse 20. Amen. He is the chief cornerstone of the church. Also, in understanding the mystery of ages, we can understand uh, uh, according to the eternal purpose, which he accomplished in uh, 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 Christ Jesus, our Lord. It is only in Christ. It is only in Christ through faith that we have the privilege of entering God's presence. Hallelujah. It's only in Christ uh, through our faith that we have the privilege of entering God's presence. And this is an incredible, this is an incredible uh, uh, truth for the church because in the Old Testament, we, 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 we know some of this, only the high priest could enter into God's presence one day <laughs> a year and then only in fear. When the high priest went in there, he went in fear. No one could come into God's presence with freedom and confidence of acceptance. The mystery of the ages is that God has always intended for Jesus Christ to be our high priest. And so he tells us in Hebrews 4, 16, our last verse, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. We don't need a, 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 a priest uh, going in to the holies of holies. We can go into God's presence once we meet uh, the requirements. And so Paul ends this uh, part of the writing in verse 13. Therefore, I ask that you do not lose heart at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. Paul did not want readers. He did not want readers uh, uh, to lose heart because of his incarceration. Uh, his suffering should make uh, his readers, should make us feel honored because if Paul had not been preaching the mystery of the ages, he would not be in prison. And the fact that God has let Paul and many others, many others, suffer so the message of salvation could reach us and the entire world should make us feel honored. And let me say to you, preachers, servants, and ministers, everyone you proclaim this mystery to may not accept you, may not receive it from you, but do know that it will benefit them later, if not then. And so, uh, there have been many who have suffered and sacrificed that we might reap the benefits. Uh, let me say this, and I'm, I'm, I'm finished. You may not be an apostle. You may not be a, 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 a prophet, evangelist, or teacher, but God will give you the opportunity to tell others about the mystery of the ages. You see, I've been beating that in the head all night. Don't tell me you haven't been to uh, 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 MIT or all of those. You're not licensed. It, uh, uh, but God will. Let me say, you may not be an apostle. You may not be a prophet. You may not be an evangelist. You may not be a teacher. You may not even be a pastor. 
But God will give you the opportunity to tell others about the mystery of the ages. It may be directly or indirectly, uh, such as inviting people this Sunday morning uh, to Sunday school. You can do it by inviting somebody to Sunday school, to worship service. Uh, services or special church events. When you try to expose people to the gospel, God will give you the courage, the energy, and the ability to do it. If you are not faithful in sharing the mystery of the ages, you betray, you betray a sacred trust. So with all of this, you've heard the revelation of the mystery You've had the declaration of the mystery and the motivation of the mystery. You've heard that. You have all of these verses. You can read them again all week until next Wednesday uh, when you will read verses 14 through 21 of chapter 3. Uh, but how will you apply what you heard tonight? Because of the awesome privilege of being trusted entrusted with the knowledge of the mystery of the ages, I ask you a question and you have to apply it. What responsibilities do you have and how should they really affect you this week? What responsibilities do you have this week and how should they affect you this week? Talk to one another. And you can see from this lesson that the main thing God has called us to do is make a proclamation. So this is the application. How do I apply this lesson? You apply it by answering that question. What responsibilities do you have this week and how should they affect you? Amen. Next week, June 30th, verses 14 through 21 of chapter three. And the title of the lesson is how to experience God's power, how to experience God's power. I pray that you want that because I told you tonight that God will give you the energy, the power, and the ability to do whatever you're doing. So let us come. We have come to the second half of this letter and uh, uh, starting We'll be finishing the doctrinal because chapters one, two, and three are the doctrinal uh, chapters uh, emphasizing uh, our standing in Christ uh, these weeks. Okay. Um, are there any questions, any comments, any announcements? Any announcements? Any comments? Praise the Lord then. Okay. Nobody has any questions or comments or announcements. All right, I have an announcement. Please, Sunday school, Sunday morning at nine o'clock. And uh, let us remember to give our offerings on uh, to Sunday school when you give uh, on the Love Life app. Make sure you remember Sunday school. So that is my announcement. Nine o'clock, we make it to 10 o'clock service, but nine o'clock Sunday morning for Sunday school. Amen, amen, and amen. Let us uh, close tonight uh, 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 Let me see if there are any questions. Uh, praise the Lord. Well, Yes, some people are ministers of certain ministries as a leader. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, but you still a minister to be a preacher, to be a, a, a preacher of the gospel. And I know we can, you know, you can preach through uh, the word, written word, poems, storytelling, music, uh, and a lot of areas, you see what I mean? Uh, so yes, you are ministers of different areas. Uh, praise be to God. Thank you. Uh, thanks to all of our ministers tonight, all of our servants tonight, all of our preachers tonight. 
God bless you all. Now let us do what God called us to do. Our assignment is to evangelize, evangelize the world, talk to someone. So with that, uh, we are going to have our closing prayer, but I want to ask all of you to please remember uh, Clyde Hudson, the brother of uh, Elder Valencia Hudson. He has been in the hospital since last week and uh, they had to take him back to surgery uh, this afternoon. Uh, they wanted, they just needed to wait for a room to take him back to surgery again. Uh, he has had surgery, but he had to go back and they had to do it today. So let us remember her brother, Clyde Hudson, and all of uh, her siblings uh, in Ohio. Her brother did come uh, from Greensboro. He made it here. So we ask you to pray, to please pray for uh, uh, Brother Clyde Hudson. Amen. Any other prayer requests? Uh, let us pray for those in inclement weather, all down south, uh, everywhere. Uh, they're having uh, floods and droughts and all, uh, please. And we are blessed. We've had rain, but not like they're having it in some of the states. Amen. Any other prayer requests? All right. Certainly, Pastor, asking that we continue to pray for uh, our Senate, for our leaders, uh, especially yes. when it comes to the voting rights of our, of our people. Yeah. Uh, so important that we uh, stay tuned into that and make sure that we're praying and make sure that we encourage uh, all of our 18 year olds and older to register to vote. Uh, our vote does count. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. Thank you. Uh, and I want to do a key to that. When you are educating people and mobilizing them about the voting, please emphasize more that the voting is for our democracy. It is to get our people of color but the democracy is for all colors, all people, it's for the United States. So please emphasize that to our young people and we, we need education on this. This is what is happening because we do not wanna lose our democracy. So the voting is important, yes, to help all people and many people of color, but the key is that we will not lose our democracy, our right to vote for all people. Amen. Please let us remember that. And please encourage young people, those or anyone that has not been vaccinated, please uh, look at it. Uh, it's an individual decision, but they're asking uh, listen to Dr. Fauci, let the young people listen. We need to get them vaccinated. We want them to go back to school in the fall. Uh, they're saying now with the Delta uh, uh, variant that it's affecting young people. It's more young people in, in, in hospitals now than the older people. Uh, and so please let our younger people know the importance of getting vaccinated. Amen. So those are the concerns of the faith uh, body. Let us go to God in prayer. Eternal God, our Father in heaven, we want to thank you. We thank you, God, for your word tonight. God, I pray in the speeding of my teaching that you will give your children, your sons and daughters, greater understanding of what was shared. God, I pray in the name of Jesus, that God, you will teach us to apply what we learn, what we receive, what we receive in your word, show us how to apply it. Show us where we need to change so we can be more like you, God. Lord, we thank you for this time together. Thank you, God, for your son dying on the cross for our sins. 
We thank you, God, for the gift of creation and allowing us to see another day. God, you've allowed us to see another setting of the sun. We thank you. And God, we lift Clyde Hudson to you. In the name of Jesus and by the healing power of God, Lord, I ask that it would transcend all the way from glory through the blood of Jesus Christ and touch him, oh God, from the center of his head to the tip of his toes. Oh God, I pray that all blood will be clean in his body. God, I pray, hallelujah, I pray that you will remove all impurities in the name of Jesus. Let him only receive clean blood. Oh God, I thank you. God, I thank you for the white cells, the red cells. Oh God, I thank you for his healing tonight. Oh, you're the bomb of Gilead. And oh God, I know that you can touch him in every area. Oh, areas that I may not even call God. But oh God, you know Clyde Hudson. You know his name. And God, I'm asking you for every part of his body, every limb. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I pray for all of the bloodstream, oh God. Oh God, all of the plasma, God. In the name of Jesus, let no contamination come to his body. Let there be no infection. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. And God, I pray for every nurse, every doctor who touches him. Lord, let them be saved. Let them be cleansed and sanctified. Oh God, I pray for every pharmacist that touches his body, that they are cleansed and sanitized. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I pray for the anesthesiologist. Oh God, that, that, that he didn't do too much, oh God. And Lord, if it hasn't taken place, I pray that he will not give too much. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, I thank you. I thank you. Oh God, his family cannot go in the operating room. Oh God, they can't even go to the hospital. But God, I know that you're the God and light in that room. God him. Oh God, God every hand that touches him by the light of Jesus Christ. God, I thank you tonight for Clyde Hudson. I thank you for his wife. Give her peace, give her comfort, give his siblings peace and comfort, oh God, that, oh God, he's in your hands and all will be well. God, I thank you. I thank you. God, I pray for Pastor Teresa McFadden's uncle, Uncle Sonny. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, I don't know what the update is right now, but God, hallelujah, I pray you will touch him. Oh God, I don't know if he's made it to the other side or if he's ill on this side, but wherever Uncle Sonny is, I pray that you'll be with him and touch her mother. Oh God, give her strength, give her peace, give her comfort. Oh God, give the family peace, oh God, that you have Uncle Sonny also in your hands. God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you that you know these two sons. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, God, I pray you and I, oh God, I praise you, God, for the respiratory system. Any blockage there, oh God, anything impeding the airway, oh God, I pray, oh God, that you would move it. Oh God, thank you. God, I praise you, Father. And for all those under my voice, God, I pray, God, you will meet them where they are. Oh, God, whatever their needs are, God, whoo, whatever the need may be, physical, emotional, uh, spiritual, God, whatever it may be, finances, family, oh, God, faith, whatever the need under the sound of my voice, that their faith will be increased and know that their circumstance is not too hard for God. God, I trust you. I believe you, God, and we'll wait on you. God is in the precious, holy, righteous, unblemished, woo, magnificent name of Jesus the Christ that I pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thanks be to God. Amen. Go in peace. 
See you next week. See you next week. Thanks be to God. Those standing in the need of prayer. Thanks be to God. Oh.